Okay, so here you go. I just pulled up a chest x-ray. I haven't looked at this before. I'm just going to dictate, I'm basically going to show you exactly how I look at a chest x-ray, just thinking it out loud, exactly how I interpret it. I sort of looked at the history here. He's an inpatient. They were talking about a pleurex catheter, which was not functioning well. That was the main clinical history. He's got multiple priors, so I know that he's been admitted and he's got priors. And I'm basically going forward with that information in my head. Inpatient, multiple priors, go. So first thing I'm doing, lines and tubes. I'm seeing this high density catheter here. This is a PIC line, termination of the SVC, so that's okay. I'm seeing a cardiac device here. I'm looking for the leads. I see, uh, I see a lead here going into the right atrium region, so that's okay. Then I see another lead going and terminating in the right ventricle. I zoomed in a bit and now I'm noticing these uh, clips. So this patient's had a cabbage, right? So I'm getting that information. And then they were talking about the pleurex, so I'm trying to look for that. And sometimes I know pleurex catheters can be hard to see. I'm pretty sure this is it here. Uh, you can sort of see it faintly, uh, but uh, it's it's kind of hard to see. And if I really wanted to confirm that, I could look at prior studies. But if this is the pleurex, which I'm pretty sure it is, it's well positioned, at least within the thorax. Uh, it's positioned in 3D space. I really can't assess, and I might look for a CT if that's available for that. So I think I found all the high-density structures. He doesn't have an ET tube or anything like that. So next thing I'm thinking is, can I make a diagnosis? Uh, first thing that's really catching my eye is all this opacity here in the lower lobes, kind of hazy opacities, uh, blunting of the costophrenic angles. This is basically uh, bibasilar opacities with uh, bilateral moderate pleural effusions. Uh, now, as I think through this, I notice again, he's got a bigger heart. He's got the cabbage clips. This is basically a type of uh, heart failure. So uh, this could be uh, mild, moderate, or severe. I would probably say it's moderate, and then the next thing I'm thinking is I need to look at the prior study and assess for interval change. Before I do that, a couple more things. I'm going to look for any evidence of pneumothorax. So I don't see that. I see lung markings going all the way out here. Noticing some more clips here. Uh, trying, to, trying to understand what that's about. Uh, they're a little bit further out. Not sure. It could be axillary surgery. Um, it is a male patient, so it's not like a breast cancer thing. Uh, Got to be honest, I'm not sure about those clips. So then looking at the left lung apex, I can actually see the guy's a uh, little bit calcified pleural reflection here. No pneumothorax. Does he have anything that could be a suspicious lung nodule? That's the next thing I'm thinking that I could get sued for. And I, I don't really think so. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and compare with the prior exam. So I have a prior study here on the right. And um, like I was talking about, the, basically the failure. Is it better or worse the same? Basically stable bilateral lower lobe uh, parenchymal opacities with bilateral at least moderate pleural effusions. No significant interval change. Um, that is really it uh, for this. And then, uh, like I said, those clips, which I really can't understand. I, um, you know, if, if I really wanted to chase that down, I probably could if I looked at a chest CT and I could uh, figure that one out. All right, guys, another case. So here's a chest x-ray. I looked at the history for this. This is an ER patient. The given history is abdominal pain. In that setting, we're really looking for free air. That's usually why these patients are imaged. This is a young patient in the 30s. There's a PA and lateral. These are good quality studies. So that's my first impression. Is this is a very nice quality looking study. And my real main goal is to rule out free air. Now, does that mean I'm not going to look at the chest? Of course not. But my first impression is, first of all, I don't see free air. I'm seeing a very nice clear set of lungs. Anytime I see a very nice clear set of lungs, I think, how could I, what could I overlook? Because my first impression is say, this is negative, go forward. But I want to make sure I'm not missing anything uh, subtle. So I'm going to look for any small nodules, anything that uh, would cause me to get sued. So I'm looking for any sort of little nodule that someone else would call or that I could, I could definitively call as a possible early lung cancer. I'm not seeing anything like that. I'm not seeing a pleural disease. I'm not seeing parenchymal disease. I'm seeing a nice, sharp costophrenic and cardiophrenic angles here. Am I seeing a pneumothorax? No, I'm seeing lung markings going out to the periphery here. So that looks pretty good. The cardiomediastinal silhouette is nice. It's a nice contour. I'm really liking this. Liking the highlighter uh, shadow here. Uh, looking at the bones, these bones are very nicely maintained. The ribs, I don't, I don't catch any funny looking possible rib fractures. I'm going to go ahead and look at the lateral view. Our lateral view looks great. This is nice and clear right here. This is a nice spot for uh, lower lobe pneumonias, nice and clear. 
doesn't have pneumonia, again, doesn't have free air. All right, I'm seeing some, uh, this is colonic gas. You can actually see the Hausdorff markings here. So that's normal. Just seeing a, a normal looking chest x-ray here. Nice spinal column, no fractures. All right, so this is basically your your garden variety two view uh, that is negative. And uh, my initial impression, which is this is a negative study, meets my final impression, which this is a negative study. And uh, I'm good to go, I'm ready to sign this off. Okay, so we're doing another case here. I have not looked at this image before. The history was ET2. This is an inpatient, all right? I wanted to know if this patient has multiple priors, and I'm going to find that out right now. Okay, so it looks like they've been admitted for a few days, and the like I said, the history was ET2, so I'm thinking about that. I'm pulling up the case. First thing I'm doing is looking at the lines and tubes. ET tube is up here. It's actually projecting above the uh, clavicles. So this is concerning. Uh, this is probably something they're trying to adjust and looks like it's up too high. I would probably stop everything and, and get on the phone and try to contact a nurse or doctor because this could be an unstable situation. So that's number one. Um, assuming I did that, um, looking at other lines and tubes, I'm seeing this nice pick line here, tip in the lower SVC, uh, good position. I'm seeing this enteric catheter. Um, trout coursing down in the midline, and I'm trying to track that catheter down further. And uh, I'm seeing obviously it's coiled here under the left hemidiaphragm, so definitely within the stomach, so in good position. So any other lines and tubes, this is some tubing that's external. These are some telemetry wires overlying the patient. So I think for tubes and lines, we're good. Next thing, I'm looking for those four things, pneumonia, pleural effusion, pneumothorax, and congestion. Uh, pneumothorax, uh, because the person is so congested, there's no pneumothorax. I can kind of see that right here. Is there other findings? Definitely she's got vascular congestion, uh, moderate, possibly severe, bilateral pleural effusions, cardiomegaly. All right. So now I'm thinking, has this changed from the prior study? That's really what it comes down to. Anything that I could call a lung cancer? Not really. Uh, this is a little more focal here, but I, I think I'm going to pass it. And that's basically where I'm at here. So uh, for my impression, the first thing would be ET tube is up too high. I'm going to call them about that. As far as the uh, findings here, I would basically compare it to the prior. And when compared to the prior study, I am seeing stable uh, pulmonary vascular congestion and at least a small to moderate bilateral pleural effusions. That's my impression. All right, so there you go. That's how I look at a chest x-ray in real time. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, make sure you click like below or subscribe for additional content. Sorel Thank you for watching. Take care.